Welcome back guys to the part two of the key facts series in emergency medicine. In this video, we are going to talk about five signs if seen in a patient of trauma, you need to suspect basal skull fracture. And let us begin with what are these five signs. First and foremost is battle sign, raccoon eyes, hemotympanum, CSF rhinorrhea and CSF otoria. You guys must be remembering these. Let us look at the images which will help us in reinforcing our learning. Battle sign is when the blood seeps below the subcutaneous layer or goes through the mastoid air cells and accumulates over there. So when you see behind the ear of these patients, you could see echimosis present on that side and that is called as battle sign. Second is this is an image of a tympanic membrane. When you look at with the otoscope, you might see blood which is behind the tympanum and that is called as hemotympanum. This is a child with bilateral echimosis around his eyes. So this is similar to a raccoon. That is why it's called as raccoon eye sign. In this image, what you see is a blob. You see a double halo because blood is much denser and clots, it doesn't seep through the cloth or of tissue paper. Whereas CSF is less denser and you see a double halo sign. You can look at the patient's pillow or the bed sheet and that is likely to be CSF. If you're not convinced, what you can do is a dipstick test where you can elicit dextrose and from the CSF. CSF contains dextrose and nasal fluid and all lacrimal fluid will not contain dextrose. And if still there is a doubt, the most accurate test to check for CSF is beta to transferrin level, which can be done in the lab. CSF leakage can be from the nose if there is a cribriform plate fracture or from the ear. To end this video, what I would say is what is the management? In management of these patients, these patients will need advanced imaging such as a CT scan neurosurgery consult and pneumococcal vaccine. The role of prophylactic antibiotics to prevent meningitis is controversial. Although practiced at many places, there is no clear evidence to prove its efficacy, whereas it shows that we are treating a resistant organism or giving rise to more resistance. The pearls in this presentation are always Think of if there is a CSF leak, they might be susceptible to meningitis. A middle cranial fossa fracture may give rise to carotid injury and the patient may develop carotid laceration, obstruction or a pseudo aneurysm. If you are discharging these patients home, instruct them very clearly not to blow their nose, no valsalva manures, no sneezing, no coughing. If you are going to Admit them for airway support. See to it that you're not putting a nasopharyngeal airway. Try with the oropharyngeal airway. Do not insert a nasogastric tube through the nose and go for invasive ventilation if needed. Non-invasive ventilation is contraindicated because you will push in the air into the cranial cavity, giving rise to pneumocephalus. I hope this video was helpful for you to reinforce what you already know and have given you some learning. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe, hit the like button, put across your comments and share this video. I'll see you soon in the next video. Till then, happy learning, enjoy your holidays, stay safe, stay at home. Till then, peace. In terms of management, these patients will need imaging, a CT scan. You will need to consult a neurosurgeon. Okay. Thank you. Peace.